I'm now clear who you're going to support <laughs> to be the next Conservative leader, but will you tell us? I would follow Dick Cheney's advice um, and I would vote for... But can you say, honestly, it was worth it? <laughs> uh, Michael, hello and welcome to the Today Podcast studio. It's a pleasure, Emil. What do you see as the relative merits and demerits of Robert Jenrick and Kemi Padenock? Well, it's difficult for me because I'm a friend of both. So um, uh, uh, Robert worked with me when I was um, Justice Minister, Kemi when I was Local Government Minister. Um, I think that uh, uh, Robert's strengths are uh, uh, diligence, rigour, hunger. Um, that he is, uh, as we can see through the course of his campaign, someone who has uh, focused in on some of the big questions that are, uh, uh, you know, that have been the Conservative Party's internal conversation, and he has answers. You may not like them, but he has uh, precise and specific uh, solutions. Now, some of those like leaving the ECHR, raise all sorts of questions about what might happen in Northern Ireland and so on. Um, but, but there is a clarity um, about him in that regard. I think one of Robert's weaknesses is that, uh, and I speak as someone who has the same uh, uh, deformation professionnel, he looks like a typical Tory politician. And, and at a time when... He's a Tory boy. Uh, well, uh, uh, so am I. So I'm. I'm. I, I'm. It's. It's a a stain that I bear. Um, and given the the sort of the strength of feeling against uh, Tory boys expressed at the last general election, that is a challenge. Kemi Badenoch. Well, uh, um, I'm uh, uh, very fond of Kemi because uh, at a critical moment when I was running for the leadership in uh, 2019, she was conspicuously brave in my defence when she didn't need to be. Um, and courage is Kemi's hallmark. So, again, uh, one of the criticisms directed at her is that she's too willing to get involved in a scrap. I actually think it is a virtue. And the other thing I would say about Kemi is she uh, comes to a conclusion about what she would do or should do by arguing it through with friends or in her own mind from first principles. She's recently come under attack, for example, for uh, not completing the erasure of European law from the statute book when she was uh, Secretary of State for Business. Um, it would have been the easy thing to do, actually, to agree with that. But she looked closely at what was involved and recognised that that would be, uh, uh, you know, as she said, I've been told that we should have a bonfire of a regulation. I'm not an arsonist. I'm a conservative. So the, the two great strengths that Kemi has are courage and intellectual rigour. So I'm now clear who you're going to support <laughs> to be the next Conservative leader, but will you tell us? No. Um, uh, well, the... you sort of have, have no. because you're a, you're a journalist and taking notes on this fascinating conversation, mm. being a Tory boy, bad. Picking a fight, good. Therefore, Michael Gove backs Kemi Badenoch. No, 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 no. I, even I, though he doesn't want to say so. I, I won't. Nick, that was a pretty blatant interpretation. No, 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 no. Well, the, 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 the thing is, <laughs> I, I think I also... <laughs> Praised uh, uh, Robert for uh, his focus, his ambition, his ability, yeah, yeah, and his work yeah. ethic. And uh, yeah. why, why won't you say? Or is well, it because now at the Spectator you have to work with whoever gets elected? Well, uh, the Spectator traditionally doesn't back candidates; it backs causes. And the other thing also is my endorsement of either candidate would only be a drag on them. <laughs> you said in the past that obviously you don't have a vote, but were you able to vote in the American election? You'd vote for Hillary Clinton. Mm. How would you vote this November if you had a vote? Uh, I would follow Dick Cheney's advice um, and I would vote for Kamala Harris. Because? Uh, because I I think that um, uh, there are many people who suffer from, you know, the people in this country who suffer from Boris derangement syndrome, the people who suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, it is the case that there are a number of things that Trump achieved during his presidency, um, which uh, uh, for which he and the team he assembled deserve credit, and there are people in that administration like Mike Pompeo, whom I admire. Just, However, just to be clear what you mean by derangement syndrome, in other words, people who are, you think are obsessed. Yes. No, I think, I think that um, uh, 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 there, there are people who uh, demonise politicians, even politicians with significant faults, and try to turn them into, you know, the, the use words like fascism, which I think are, uh, 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 are misapplied. However, I think that there are questions of uh, character... Um, I have a friend, Philip Bobbitt, who's an American academic. He said to me, um, I'm bringing up my son. I want him to tell the truth, respect women, 
and uh, be proud of America's traditions. And I want him to be humble and respectful to people who are not as fortunate as him. If Donald Trump is president, then how can I say to him that the most important man in this country, the most important man in this world, uh, is operating in defiance of all of those virtues and expect him to believe that our democratic system is working? You talked about having 19 years as mm. a member of parliament, just at a personal level. Do you regret that it's over or are you relieved? I'm relieved. Um, there are some things about um, politics, um, parliament, government, that I miss individuals in particular with whom I worked. Uh, but overall, uh, I, I, I feel relieved. I saw you speak at a charity event. And as it happens, I was standing quite close to Jeremy Hunt. It was the day you announced you weren't going to be oh, yes. a candidate. Yes. I think it's fair to say he looked a bit shocked <laughs> and not necessarily best pleased because you were quite close neighbours mm. in Parliament. Was it quite a late decision? Yes. Because um, you took a lot of people by surprise. Yes, including myself. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I've been reflecting, um, but I, I had anticipated that uh, the general election would not occur until the autumn. Uh, uh, there were some things that I wanted to complete in the department. And then suddenly, once Rishi had made that decision, um, I had to think, do I want to contest the election? Do I want to be here afterwards. And I recognised that in uh, declining to stand, uh, that in some respects it was a uh, cowardly decision. But I, uh, I, I I, had felt for a while that my useful contribution was drawing to a close. You achieved a great amount. Um, you know, you uh, were consequential, you held many cabinet positions. But can you say, honestly, it was worth it? Yes. Um, but it's a... Impact on your family? Impact oh, no, no, no. Impact on your, no. it's a, it's impact a, it's on your a, health? It's a close call. Um, but, uh, and uh, no one in politics is a conscript. We're all volunteers. Um, uh, politicians who ask for sympathy uh, generally invite scorn. But... Uh, you left you politics now, Michael. You can be honest. You can be frank with us. No, you no, could no, say, you if, if it were true, you could say, you know what? I sometimes think in the middle of the night... Um, I'm proud of the education reforms. I think about what happened with David. I think about what happened with Boris. And you know what? I think, my God, that hurt. It wasn't worth it. I don't think it, uh, it, it certainly some of those things hurt, uh, undoubtedly. But um, I think on balance, it was it was worth it. Um, uh, uh, other people close to me paid a price. And I, uh, you know, almost every day feel guilty about that. Um, but uh, I can't remember it's another cliche people say in life you regret uh, what you don't do not what you do do um, and I suspect the thing is that um, as we touched on earlier it's in the nature of my personality sometimes to get drawn into conflicts and crusades and so on so um, I don't think that I would ever have been a pipe and slippers dad whatever uh, I had done in the last 20 years. Whoa.